Welcome to an all-new episode of Get Lit with Leanna, the podcast. Join me as I sit down with a new guest author in each episode to discuss their books, careers, and everything in between. I am so excited. Today's episode, I am joined by USA Today bestselling author Renee Carlino, who has penned so many contemporary novels, including my personal favorites, Before We Were Strangers, Wish You Were Here, and of course, Swear on This Life. Her books have been featured in so many publications, Cosmo, In Style, USA Today, Huffington Post, so many, and today she finally sits down with me to discuss some of my favorite books of hers, how she's developing these stories into movies, and so much more. I can't wait for you guys to listen. Here we go. Enjoy. Welcome, Renee Carlino, to the first ever Get Lit with Liana podcast. I'm very excited to have you As my first guest, I was kind of just telling you briefly before that like your book, Before We Were Strangers, was kind of the first book that I read in the beginning of the pandemic that catapulted me into like reading so often and reading so many romance books and love stories. So like it's a very full circle moment right now that you're here and we're doing this as the first time pod. That's wonderful. I'm so I I'm just like honored. I love that it was a a lot of people sent me messages saying that it was getting them through the pandemic. And I'm like, that's the best thing that I can do right now, you know, is just put the books out there. And um, yeah, I was really excited. I saw kind of, I saw a lot more movement with them when, once the pandemic started, which is kind of sad, but you know, but what else were we doing, but reading, you know? And so um, cool. It's very awesome. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for sharing my books with so many of your followers and my pleasure. It's been a treat. So I guess we need to like start at the very beginning. So I did minimal research about you and on you because I kind of just wanted to go into this blind and have a genuine conversation. But I'm really first and foremost curious about the beginning of your writing career. I know that you started off self-publishing. So how did you start writing? What was your first writing experience like? How did it start? I was writing really young. I mean, I was like writing at seven like I had fantasies and things like that. I, I really, I had imaginary friends. I was really, I didn't think that there was no point in my childhood that I thought I would be a writer, but I was writing. Like it was a, it was something that I did and that I really loved doing, but I didn't aspire to be a writer necessarily. Um, in high school, I wrote a lot and, uh, you know, in college a little bit, but I went into film and I was doing more like camera stuff and, um, just more visual stuff. So I wasn't even think, really thinking about writing, but while I was doing that, I was visualizing all these stories, you know, that I had. And I, at the time I was kind of writing, but it was, it was always just for every once in a while I would get like a, a on a kick and say like, I'm going to, I'm going to write this whole thing and I'm going to try to sell it and I'm going to try to get it published or whatever it was. Um, but a lot of the, there's still a lot of things that are like entombed on my computer that are just have never seen the light of day, just from just short stories and, um, scripts and, you know, half novels. And so then I started teaching and I, and I got just busy and like the day-to-day work stuff. Um, but once I had my kids, I was home alone a lot with with my two babies. I was sort of bored and lonely and they were watching Yo Gabba Gabba, you know, like it was like they were watching little kids shows and I w- you couldn't really, I didn't really, wasn't hiding out reading a lot. I, but I had this room that was sort of right off the room where they played all the time. And it, had, it was like a semi office and it had a computer in it. And I would go in there and kind of like write poems and like little short stories and whatever. And I just started writing this book and I wrote a few pages and I was like, I really like this. This is so fun. And I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing. And then, you know, six, it was like six weeks that I had 300 pages and it was done. It was a complete, completely finished novel. It was a sweet thing. Um, and I knew, I mean, I knew I could write like that, but I didn't really know what it was yet. I didn't know if it, I didn't know if anyone would ever want to read it, if anyone would read it. And that's a really important piece too. When I talk to people who are aspiring writers is that um, you kind of have to really love doing it because you have to go into it assuming that no one will ever see it. You know, it has to be like the journey that you love. So with, um, with Sweet Thing, yeah, I just, I was having like a ball by myself and, you know, just like typing away. And then um, 
I sent it to my best friend, my best childhood friend who was like a, just a voracious reader when we were young. And she, she ended up becoming a lawyer, but I think she wanted to go into publishing. I think that was like the first thing she started headed toward. Um, but I said, will you read this? It's, I don't know. It's probably lame. And I don't know, da, 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 you know, and she read it in like two days and she was like, you have to do something with this. I don't know exactly what it is, but you have to do something with this. You, you obviously can do this, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't five years of like slaving over revisions and whatever. You can obviously tell a story. So you have to do something with it. So I kind of entertained the idea of like, queer. I did, I think I queried maybe a couple of agents and I kind of entertained the idea of getting it published traditionally. Um, but it was also at the time where I was seeing a lot of people self-publishing in the very, very early, early years of self-publishing early months almost. And I was like, well, why not? And I, and I think that I also to be honest, I didn't have that much confidence in it to think that I could ever really get it published. So I, um, so I self-published it and I did, I sent it to a lot of people, a lot of bloggers and a lot of people who were reading and that kind of just blew up all of a sudden and people were like sharing it. And I was like, what is happening? This is crazy. And then of course I started getting calls and then the, and then Atria wanted to publish it. And so that's kind of what started, what catapulted me into publishing. Um, even though it was self-published, they did a reprint. There's been three covers of that book. Crazy. And yeah, I know. And then since then I've written at 14, I think I just finished my 14th book. So yeah, I know it is nuts. And it's, it's like I said, though, it's really like my, it's I, as long as I can still look at it as a hobby, it's hobby and, you know, something that I just enjoy and like some sort of self-care or something like journaling. As long as I can look at it that way, I really enjoy it, you know? So I noticed that I've over the last couple of years, I've been like, I'm going to take a couple of years off and then <laughs> I'll, I'll take a month off and then be like, right back at it. Like, you know, just like, going, Oh, I had an idea. I like, woke up at four in the morning and thought about this idea. And, That's you know. crazy. I want to take it back before we get further into like all of your other books. I'm so curious about your film background because I also minored in film. And until I started reading, I was a humongous film buff. Like I just would watch literally so many movies. Like it was not normal. And when I started dating my boyfriend, he watched nothing. Like he had never watched a movie or TV show. Like he wasn't into it. And I was like, I'm going to convert you. And we had like a whole like rom-com movie marathon. I like went through like all of the basics. I was like, you need to know about from like the nineties to now, like this is, these are the important ones. And we went back to the eighties and like, so I'm just so curious about your film background and how that like lent to your storytelling. So I know you said you kind of did a lot of camera work, but like, did you do some writing stuff? And now that you're writing, like, I can't imagine what that's like for you to like visualize in movie format, what these stories would be like. Yeah. And I've written, I've, so I've, I've already, I, there's a couple that have been adapted. I've adapted a couple of books that I've adapted the wish you were here. And then before we're strangers. Um, but no, I actually did. I did a couple of different jobs in the film business. Like I started out sort of going more toward the visual and the production and on set sort of aspect of, of filmmaking. And then I fell into something where I was working in development with a couple of producers and I was reading a lot of scripts. I was reading just, that's all I did actually was sit in a room and read scripts all day. Um, and I remember thinking like, wow, this, this, who does this? This must be so hard, you know, cause I just really didn't have the confidence. I didn't think that I, I could do that. Um, and then we, so my husband, I met my husband because we were both were really passionate about film and same thing. Like the, our first conversation was like all of our favorite films and he had, he had a film degree and he was in start just starting out in LA and he had like all this kind of like, he had like a PA job picking up cigarette butts outside of some commercial. Oh my God. Oh. Um, and so he, I was like, Oh, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm a little bit younger. So I'm like, I'm going to get my film degree and that's when I'm going to follow you into this industry which, um, is a crazy industry. I mean, there's so many facets to it. And my husband is a set decorator now and he, yeah. And he, he's a, That's he's so very cool. successful. Yeah. He's, and he, and he just kept on kind of going up through the ranks and, um, and we love it. You know, obviously we love, the, he loves the process and it's just really exciting to move from one story to the next. And so as a writer, I do, you know, I get to read some of the, the scripts really early and it's just a total joy. Like it's so much fun. Um, but the reason why I got, I got out of it was because I was 
I was really getting serious about being domestic and like having kids and whatever. Yeah. And we were, we, I was like, I didn't, I didn't really think that through thoroughly. I have to be honest, but, um, you know, at the time it was really romantic ideas. You can stay home and raise all these babies. And of course, what do I do? I have babies and then I start writing books in a room you know, <laughs> frantically, but, um, he, um, he, my husband was like, well, you're just a really good teacher. You always, always been a very good teacher with people. Like you can help them figure things out and why don't you get your teaching credential and do something like that? And then you can, you know, until we have kids and whatever. And so I did that for a few years, but I was, um, I was always talking. We would be in on long drives and I would say, so let me tell you the story. And then it would be about two people. And actually the one that I, after the rain, um, actually wrote the script first for that. And then I wrote the book when I, after I'd gotten my first book deal. Um, so yeah, it was, they were always kind of in my mind as movies. And I think that people, I don't know if you've gotten this feedback, but they sort of read almost like cinematically, like you can visualize. Yes. Them. Well, yeah. Okay. So I had a really crazy conversation actually with somebody who was telling me that when they read books, they see nothing. It's just black. Yeah nothing. They don't visualize. I've heard different things. I've heard people that say like, I can't see the person's face, but I see the silhouette. So if you're telling me they're walking to the car and he grabs her hand, I can visualize that. I just don't see people. And I've heard what people say they see nothing. And then I've heard people like me who really extremely detailed, see it. Like I put an actor and an actress to every single scene. I put a house, I put a scene, like I can visualize it perfectly, perfectly. So it's so cool to me that that's how you write. And like, you see it too. Cause it sounds like we're kind of in the same position where when we read, we see it like a movie, right? Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I mean, I have, I even, there were things that I couldn't do in the book that I wished just looks. And I was constantly trying to get, get put expressions on their faces. And sometimes I overdo that. And that's one of my little, like my little things that I get down on my writing self about, but um, <laughs> it's because I am going, gosh, I wish I could just describe this look in this moment, exactly the way I, I'm seeing these two people look at each other, whatever it is. Right. Um, so yeah, it's definitely really visual in my mind. And, um, so yeah, I do, uh, adapting those two books that I just, I just did that recently. That was just like a piece of cake. It just, right. it, it was almost like it was easier than writing the book. It was just flew out, you know? So but like, how does that even be just because I'm so not familiar with like the difference between screenwriting and novel writing. Like if you've already written a novel and now you're the one adapting it for the screen, how, what kind of changes do you have to make? Like, what's that process like? Well, there's definitely a lot less description, which is kind of a, the bummer part of it. It's a lot more of the just dialogue and just kind of the basic direction, like where, where you are what you're, you know, where the characters are right now in this moment. Um, and maybe some small little, um, expressions or intonation, like just the description of how someone's saying something or, or whatever, but mostly it's just dialogue. And, and I did have to, um, with before we were strangers, I really loved writing that script because I got to add a scene that I, I always wanted to show the scene and before we were strangers and I could, I couldn't do it because of the format of before we were strangers of the way it was going between past and present. And, um, and the, and the film would do that too, but you're, you're not, it's not one person's point of view all the time. So it's kind of going yeah. back and you're seeing, um, so it's not a whole chapter of Matt. It's mostly, it's kind of their cuts back and forth between Matt and Grace. Um, so I got to add this scene that I'd always imagined in my mind. And I was like, Oh my God, I wish I hope this comes true. Oh um, my God. So For the people yeah. that are listening to audio, they can't like see my face, but like, as you're telling me this, I'm like <laughs> dying. My face is like, my mouth is in a big O like I would die for any, like, just give me two more minutes with them. Two more minutes that I haven't already reread like six times, you know? <laughs> Thanks. I feel that's like, that was really cause, because you know, you never know how people are going to look at the your imaginary friends in your mind and what they're going to see. But, um, but yeah, no, that was fun. That was a fun part is that I had to change things because technically and like when you, when logistically, like some things just won't work. And obviously you can't put every single scene in a book into a movie because it would just be 12 hours long. Um, but I did put my, most of my favorite scenes in, in, in there. And like I said, I got to add that and that was so much fun because I got to revisit them after six, seven years, maybe like when I first started writing before we were strangers, I was probably, I was probably younger than Matt and Grace are in the book. I think I was. So it's been, it's been a while, 
So I got to revisit them and read it again. And of course I read it and went, Oh, I wish I wish I would have written that differently, a little bit differently. But you know, no, from a reader's point of view, I feel like you literally could not have done anything different. Like to this day, when people say like give me a second chance romance, I'm like, Well, have you read before we were strangers? Cause if not, like this is the first one you must read. Thank you. No, it's I appreciate that. It's it's, it's- it's kept, it gets kept going for, for whatever reason, it, it still has legs a little bit. So no, it definitely, definitely has its legs. And the fact that you're adapting it for the screen is insane. And if we ever get to see it, I'm just going to like pray on every 11, 11 that one day I'll be able to see it, but I'm actually really curious. Like we'll just get into before we were strangers now, cause we're on the topic of it, but the whole concept of like misconnections, I first of all, never knew about like a misconnection ad. I don't know if that's like a Canadian versus U S thing, or maybe a generational thing. Like I just never knew that it was that those existed. So that whole concept immediately drew me in. And I'm wondering if like you had a misconnection experience in your life that led to this or a friend did. Cause I'm just so intrigued by this concept and I need to know how it came to you. I wish, I wish that I did. And I wish that I could tell you that one of my friends did, but how this came to me was actually if somebody sent me a misconnection article and it was a little, it, I, I now kind of in retrospect, I feel like it might've been written by a writer because um, of just how perfect it was, but it was a much older, it was a man that was like in the, in the twenties, had a girlfriend and had to go back to Japan to take care of his dying father. And it had been like 60 years or whatever it was. Um, or more or longer, 70, 80, whatever, how longer it was. He was at the kind of at the end of his life. And he, it was this misconnection from him to her. He hadn't seen her in all of these years, many, 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 many years. And, um, he was saying he never stopped thinking about her and that he wished that he could have told her, you know, and he, and he said something like, I'm at the end of my life now and, and I'm still thinking about you. And, you know, if you're out there, maybe we can get a coffee or something. It was just like the cutest thing ever. And yeah. I was, I was melted when I read it and I'm like, Oh God, this is such a cool concept. Um, I don't know how realistic it is, but it's such a cool concept. And how can I make it realistic? Like, how can we make it modern? Because so many people have read it and said, well, why didn't they just go on Facebook or why didn't they just like figure it out? Like, why can't they just, just, you know, scour the internet and find this person and so there were a lot of things that I had to do, as you know, I had yeah. to change names and things to make, make it so that it was much harder for them to get in touch with people, with each other. Um, and also both of their personalities were, were sort of like, or sort of anti-technology. That was the vibe I got when I was reading it. I was like, they wouldn't be like looking for each other on Facebook. Like they, neither of them would be doing the social media thing. Like they're both like so artsy and so career driven, which like leads me to my next question. And this is something that I thought about a lot, especially after like rereading the book and reading a lot of romance books and love stories, but I rarely have come across books where I really feel like you as an author make the reader work for it. And the fact that like Matt and Grace both chose their careers over each other when they were young, I feel like we don't get stories like that, especially young people that are choosing their profession over like young love. And it just, to me as a reader, at least like when they finally got together at the end as adults and had like lived fulfilled lives and like learned how to be themselves and like individual humans, it was so much more gratifying. And that's what made the reunion at the end for me, at least like so much more like emotional and made me love it so much more. So I'm just wondering, like when you were writing the book, was it always in your head? Like, no, when they're young, they're going to choose themselves first. And then they're going to get together when they're older. Or did you like ever toy with the idea? I guess when it's a misconnection, you kind of have to have them separate, but was it always in your head, like a re- the reason why they were going to be apart was because of their careers. I am um, for sure. Uh, no one has ever asked me that. I just have to say that first of all, that's really interesting. I am, I've talked about this book a lot over the years and I've never, I've never thought about that aspect of it. Um, I guess, and I'll tell you, this is a personal, this is a personal piece in before we were strangers. My husband and I were together young, but we were very much our own on our own. You know, we didn't move in together right away. We were very much doing our own thing, um, and sort of evolving as people separately. And, um, so maybe that was just a natural expectation for me, for the, for characters, for, for them to do that a, because they were, they were in college and they were going to do something with their, with their education. And, 
Um, and you know, Grace was came from a home that where she knew she had to go out there and make some money and get a job and do some things. Um, so yeah, but I I always felt like they thought they could have it all, but then you that but then the audience kind of knew that it wouldn't work. Like, or I was hoping that the audience would go, well, it's not gonna work or he's not gonna come back or whatever it is. Um, but I, I wanted to in those early chapters of the past make the, it clear that Grace and Matt definitely thought that, and that's another thing I did in the script. Grace and Matt thought <laughs> that they thought that they really were just saying, like, see you later, like we'll we'll see you in a couple months or whatever. Um, so I don't know if he says it in the airport, if he says, this isn't goodbye, this is see you later, but I definitely wrote that in the script. So I know that that's, that's, he says that to her, um, that, you know, cause she's crying and she's sort of hysterical and yeah, she sort of stayed back, but she really didn't, you know, that was what she wanted to do. And a lot of people have asked me about that too. Like, was she giving it up for giving up her career for Matt? And I was like, no, that, that was what she decided that she wanted to do to go to grad school and become a teacher and whatever. And that's, you know, there's a lot of, um, nobility in that like so For I sure. don't know why it'd be like and not like almost like people are like oh why why wouldn't she just jump on the plane and go to Europe you know but right she had to she had to make a living and so but then she ended up you know as we know going to Europe so yeah um, but it was just interesting to me like how you didn't just give us the happily ever after right away, like that this conflict and that they chose themselves first. I don't know. I feel like I don't really hear or see that in romance books, especially. So that was something very special about this story that I particularly really loved. And every time I reread it, like that part of the book always gets me the most. Thank really you. That's a, definitely a big theme in, in that book is time and yeah. sort of, and yeah, and how we view it. And when you're in your 20s, um, it's like you make so many decisions that are permanent decisions in your twenties when you probably aren't fully developed as an adult yet. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, so, I'm in my twenties now and that's exactly how I feel. It's, I feel like I'm making all of these big decisions and like where I'm going to live, what I'm going to con- continue to do for work, what my partner is going to do for work, what we're going to do. And it's just like, I still feel like I'm 50 and 60 and like, and now I'm supposed to set up my life now for the next X amount of years. It's like, it's crazy. It's crazy. A yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, but you, know, it's- you can always have a second act, you know, and that's the thing is that and that's the part of before we're strangers. That's so that I love so much is that they say it's, this was, this is our time. This was the right time. Yeah. You know? Right person, wrong time at the beginning, right. then right person, right time. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the whole concept of time and how like time is precious. And it just makes me think obviously about what you were here. Um, and obviously that's like a major theme of the book, but I feel like I'm a pretty good judge of character or like a judge of books. And like, when I start a book, I know where it's going and I legit had no clue where the story was going, like at all, at all. When I first met Adam, I was like, like, is something going on? Like you, I just really had no indication of where it was going. So I'm so curious about how the idea of like, creating a character who has cancer with short-term memory loss as a side effect of the cancer, like how that idea came to you. That story started so different. It was such a different story. It started out and I was in like, Banksy was like my inspiration. Like this guy who went around putting up all this art of all over LA, you know, like these amazing murals and whatever, um, and installations and things. Um, and I don't, I don't remember exactly what direction I went in from there, but I knew that, um, I knew the one scene where she sees the memory that she, I knew that before I knew exactly how I was going to write Adam. Like I knew I wanted that scene in there where she sees the memory of the fictional story she tells, you know, or whatever it is sort of like, um, so I, I had that in my mind. Um, but as far as developing that, a lot of times that's, it's like, it is logistics. Like you have to make it make sense. Right. So why would he, why would he just ghost her, you know, after he has this amazing night with her or whatever. Um, and why does he have all these weird quirks and, but also he needed an arc too, because he was, he was facing his mortality at, at a young age, you know? And, um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It was, (laughs) No, I went one book to write. Actually, I really loved writing that one too. But like, I went into the book completely blind, and I had no idea what I was in for. Like, I was 
a blubbering idiot. And I also normally typically hate love triangles because like, don't make me choose. And the way that this was written, like it was so perfect. Like I don't, I've never read another love triangle book where it's like both everybody in the love triangles understanding of the situation. And then like, she kind of gets the best of both worlds and she gets everything she needs at the right time. And I thought that was such like a realistic way of looking at it rather than it being like a catty fight, like girl choosing between two guys or guy choosing between two girls, like just having it be like a natural progression of life and like her being able to be honest with how she feels and what she needs at that time. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I, I was actually pretty worried about writing another. I loved, I don't, I don't think I had written an, a book like that where no, not yet. I hadn't written where there was two male like characters. Um, so I was a little worried about how audience an audience would take it. Uh, but I needed her, I needed that to be in there. It needed, the book needed that, you know what I mean? It needed that where she chooses a little bit, but she chooses out of her, like, um, I want to say she, she, she does it for her own growth. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, for uh, sure. She, yeah. So we, we wrote the script for that. Julia Stiles is going to direct it and it's going, yeah, I know it's really, I exciting. can't deal. When I saw that, I was like, shut up. Like there's, n- I can't deal. It's going to be so crazy to see that story come to life. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, but I remember in the early conversations with her and, um, the two producers that we were talking about, the things that they that stuck that stuck out to them, I had never really thought about. And you're kind of bringing up things that I had never really thought about either. Um, it just is naturally, it, you. It's pretty organic the way that I write. I I, I know that I I need to tie up loose ends, but um, but it's pretty much I I see it like a movie, like, and I want it to go this way, and so that's that's what I do. And then this brings us to my last favorite book of yours which honest to God, it was my favorite book of 2021. Oh. Swear on this life destroyed me. Um, I actually like don't even know where to begin, but I guess the most important question that I have is like, how did you come up with the idea of doing a book within a book? Because in other books that I've read, when it's like a letter within a book or a poem within a book, whatever it is, like a piece of literature within a piece of literature, for whatever reason, I'm always like, like my brain just doesn't want to focus on it. And I'm like, but this isn't the main plot. So I don't want to like spend my time reading this. I want to read what's going on now. Right. I totally get what you're saying. I feel the same way. There's a really, there's an art to doing that writing letters in a book or having like in Frankenstein. I mean, like, how are you Mm -hmm. doing that? You have to tell the story in the letters. Like it has to be in the letters. It can't just be frivolous sort of information. Um, and that's what the book was because it was a true story. So it was the story of their childhood. I think that's why it worked because you were getting the backstory while you were reading it. And so exactly. it didn't feel like, yeah, you were wasting your time reading exactly. a novel or whatever. So, but like, how did that idea come to you to do a book within a book? I, um, I, it just popped into my head literally one day I was like, wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing? First of all, if like you, your crush was became this writer and you walked into a bookstore and he'd written a book about you, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Um, and then how could I do that? And then how could I make it make sense and, and whatever. And so I wanted them to be these kids that I remember I really, really, I had the road in my mind already. Like one of the first scenes that I had was them going down the road, like bouncing around on the bus and then being like, kind of like not liking each other at first. And then, you know, realizing that they only had each other there with these adults that were just like not present. Um, and so they found their, they found their kind their joy and their, their peace and their safety, like in these novels that they would read together. And, um, and that was their bond. So I, I thought that that I thought that could make, I thought that could work for a, a book within a book type of formula. You know what I mean? I thought it has to be about people who really love reading. Like, yeah. <laughs> and or writing or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. So. The the last line of the book within the book, like every time I read it, I actually get like, I don't know if you get this, but like every time I read something that's like unbelievably romantic and like uh, it gives me like a hot, warm feeling that like pangs through my body. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever felt this? Oh yeah, I'm sure. A million times reading. I love that feeling when I'm reading. Thank oh, you for saying that. It's it's not normal. And I was even like skimming the book again, like this week. I was like, I just need to do a little like 
little skim. And again, and I had like full body goosebumps and I went to my sister. I was like, look at my arm. She's like, what'd you just read? I was like, look at my arm. She's like, oh, let me guess. Like swear on this life. You read the last page. I'm like, mm-hmm. like every time. Oh, I love that. No, it's so, it's so well written. And like, you're just like, in, when you're reading the book in the moment, you're waiting for that realization. You're waiting for her to realize like, okay, now what do I do next? Like yeah. we've acknowledged each other. And it just like, it couldn't have been written more perfectly. It just it, like totally bought everything full circle. And like, it was beyond good, like beyond yeah. gratifying was, as a reader. It was a hard, That was a harder book to write than some of the other ones because it wasn't chronological or, or actually I think that I wrote it chronological. I, I did. I wrote the book within the book first. Okay. And then, um, and I knew, and I, and then I had to, I revised that book more than any other book that I've written. Like I spent more time revising and changing that and moving pieces around and stuff in it because it, the, because it is a little bit of a different format. Right. Um, and then we had to make a decision to not put originally, I really had the whole book, his whole book in there, like the entire novel. Yeah. And so we had to kind of like decide not to do that because it was one of those situations where you're like, okay, I just want to get back to the present. Like, I don't want to be talking about this anymore. What happens to them? Um, so yeah, we decided that there, it was going to be like excerpts, you know, like you were just going to get little bits and pieces of her just kind of like going, Oh my God, like, what is this? Right. Um, so yeah, that was how that happened. And it was, it, it wasn't the easiest one to write, but it was, it was also really, it's my husband's favorite book for sure. Like he, in fact, somebody said the other day, I'm reading one of your books. And he said, which one? (laughs) And she said, Lucian Devine, which is a totally different kind of book. Um, but he's all like, and he walked away. I'm like, what? And he's all, yeah, I just wanted her to say swear on this life. Cause I just think everybody should read that. And I was like, Oh, that's sweet. Cause it's, it's so good. And it's by far, like I've read so many of your books, but it's by far my favorite. And like, I always now since reading it recommended to people and so many people message me being like, I just bought it because of you better live up to the hype. I'm like, if it doesn't, I literally will Venmo you money to like <laughs> compensate you. It will be your favorite. And like, I-, I can't tell you how many messages I get from people being like, swear unless life changed me. I'm like, you're welcome. Like you are welcome. Thank you. It's That's beyond. Awesome. No, it's I also so feel good. like that one has a little bit of a YA feel to it too. You find like, yeah, I like I loved writing it and and there was moments where I was trying I was debating on whether how far I was going to go with them in the book, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you could um, say it. You could be you yeah. could be blunt, it's fine. So, so um and I was like, well, is this going to be a YA novel? Like is this going to be a young adult? Like could it be? Well, and honestly because I was writing the tra- their childhood first. So it wasn't until later when I started writing his character as an adult, which was sort of he was a little bit arrogant, um that I uh that I decided that, you know, this is going to be for people my age and whatever and younger and, you know, but not kids for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. It, um, but yeah, that's, that was, thank you. I appreciate that. That ending. I, I do remember the ending pretty, pretty well. I think he's pleading to her to come and find him. Yeah. So, um, so good. The last um, line is just like, Oh my God, beyond words. Um, but like speaking of Jason, like all of the boys in your books, like you just write men, like fictional men so, so well. And I find that like a lot of the time when I read romance books, I'm either right away, like, okay, I'm into this guy or I'm like cringed out. Like you could tell a girl's writing him because it's not realistic. Like there's not, nobody's that sweet and that nice all the time, you know? So I just love the way that you write men and like, especially the way you write banter between your couples in your books. So I'm wondering like how that comes to you. Do you hear these conversations in your head and you're like, oh yeah, that would be this one. Or like, oh no, they, they wouldn't say this to each other. Like how does the banter come in? It's so interesting that you say that because someone else just recently said that to me about the, about the male voice in how do you know, because I just finished a, I just finished a novel that is my age to two people, my age or a little bit older actually. Um, and their relationship is like on, on the brink of disaster. And, um, so there, what he's thinking in his mind, uh, um, my manager that read it, he was like, how do you know that's what we think? Like, how do you know that's what guys think? I'm like, well, I've been in a relationship a for a really long time. B, um, I, I'm not, that's not an attractive and, an, and that's not really an attractive quality for someone to be so, so saccharinely sweet. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's mm-hmm. not, that's not the most attractive I, and and neither is one, a man who's like overconfident or just the bravado or whatever, you know, like that's not either. Um, so I try to find, I try to make them realistic and to have flaws and, um, and to have realistic conversations and, and, and whatnot, and it not be just so 
gushy because yeah, that kind of takes me personally when I'm reading a romance novel and I love romance novels and I, I love reading everything, but it's sometimes it'll take me out of the moment if it's, if it's, if, if he's too nice, isn't that terrible? But it's not really no, it's just so true. Nice. Yeah. People it's don't say that, that enough. Nice yeah. Yeah. People don't talk about it enough. Like what, for me, at least like what makes romance novels so like good, like a good one to me good is when it's realistic. And if the guy's just like too mushy or too obsessed with the girl and it's not like enough of a give and take, then I'm just like, this is a fantasy book. This is not real. Like <laughs> I need something that I can relate to and like be really throw myself in and be totally like submerged in, you know? Yeah. And I, and I also think that it's really, I think that when men show their vulnerability, I think that's a really attractive quality. So even, I don't know if you would describe that as that we find Matt there in the beginning, but that's how I viewed him in the beginning was sort of this vulnerable, broken down, like just surrendered to fate, the shitty fate that he had or whatever, For sure. um, or the bad, bad fate, like ticket that he bought or whatever it is, but I didn't. Um, and so in my mind, he, that was a really attractive quality about him was that he was willing to say like, like, you know what? I didn't, I didn't, and I wasn't so happy and I got all these things, but I didn't have it. I didn't have what I, what I really wanted. And, um, and so, yeah, I related to Matt a lot more in that book actually than I did to grace. It was much more of a Matt book and than it was a grace book in my mind in the beginning. For me too, even as a reader, it felt way more like a map book than a grace book. I don't know why, because I feel like you do a pretty equal job at like getting into both of their heads and both of their point of views. But I, I maybe because it even, because it started with Matt, but like, it just, to me always felt way more like Matt's story with grace sp- sprinkled in. Than there, yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting about that is that it's because it started that way. It was actually a book. The book title was grace and color and it was the misconnection, but it was all about like it was going to be told completely from Matt's point of view. That's why that that's, I just re- realized that. There we go. Um, yeah. I just remember <laughs> that it was kind of, it was like this love letter to her. It was like this long love letter to her, but I, but then the, the, the woman in me like really wanted her to have a voice and not just be this sort of, I don't know, um, shallow. It, she almost came off. If, if we never heard her, and so, you know, her inner thoughts, or we never really th- saw her in pain alone, then I don't think that we would have had as much sympathy for her, you know, for sure. Um, so I had to, I had to do that. And I, and actually loved writing her parts, but I definitely related to Matt more in the book. Just, I w- was into photography and, um, stuff like that. And I was never a musician and I really <laughs> wanted to be, but I, could, I would never make it. Um, so <laughs> that piece, but, um, but no, yeah, for sure. It's, it's a, it's kind of a natural process. I think it just happens. Um, when I'm daydreaming in the car, listening to music, I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if you walked into a bookstore and saw a book all about you, you know, it's not normal. And then also back to swear on this life, like the book within the book, within the book also just like F to me up. Like I was like, no, this can't be keep happening. Like what it just felt like book inception. Like, I was like, what is happening? What's real? At one point I was like, what story? Like, I was like, what if Renee now does a total 360 and it ends up being the story within the story within the story. That's the story. Like I was just going crazy, but you yeah, know, it's so well, it's just so well written. So well done. I like loved it, adored it. Oh, this day will never not love it. Um, <laughs> before I let you go, because we've been chatting for a while, I'm just so curious, like what you're up to now, what are you writing? I know you're working on wish you were here movie with Julia Stiles, which is not normal. Um, beyond crazy. I can't wait, but like, what else is going on? Any other film stuff you could tell us any book stuff you can share? I just finished like my, so I would, I, I would, I could kind of describe this as my, um, be my generation, um, before, even though that was my generation before we were strangers, but, um, a little bit older, a little bit different circumstances, but a story that is, you know, there's two sides to every story and you're going to find out, you know? Um, so I love, I love writing that dual point of view, but I wrote a much more grown up book in the sense that it's, it's not so much about their love story. It's just sort of about life and about a woman and her journey more. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And I, I can tell you the premise is that these two married people are getting a divorce and they, they end up getting a nesting apartment, which is an apartment that they share, um, and they go back and forth from the family home so they don't have to move the kids out of the family home. And they sort of realize a lot about their marriage by seeing 
the other person live, if that makes sense, they go to the apartment, they see what they're doing, but they only just see items and things and, and go, oh, well, you know, for so many years, I, w- I made him dinner and, you know, and I look in and see leftovers from where did he eat this? Who did he eat with? You know, that kind of thing. So just this strange um, dichotomy, I guess. And also, also something that I really um, wanted to do was I really wanted to write about marriage because I had been married for so long at that point, you know, and I really wanted to write about it. And I wanted to write about having kids and I wanted to write about relationships. With, I loved writing. Actually, I loved writing Ash, the character Ash and Before We're Strangers. I really loved writing her because I was like, if I had a daughter. This is how I want her to be. She was so cool. Um, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, I, th- I just finished that and I'm still kind of, I'm still babying it. It's still an infant. It's just one complete first really early draft. Um, and it doesn't even really have a title, but there's that. And then uh, I finished the script for before we're strangers and that's out in the world a little bit. Um, so that's getting some reads. So that's exciting, but yeah, I mean, I'm always writing even when I'm, even when I don't have like a solid novel idea, um, in my head, I'm always writing and sometimes something will just come together, but I'm pretty excited about the book I just finished because it, it was, it was like the, um, that dual point of view and where I got to write from both, both sides, even though it really is more of the, the, the woman's journey. Um, but, and it was a lot of fun and she's a writer and I've never, I don't, I don't know what I, yeah, I guess since we're in this life, he's a writer, but I never really wrote from like that ask. I didn't ever, I didn't put too much about writing in swear in this life. No, it was more, she was just in college and he had just written a book and whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it. And then just, being a mom and doing, doing yoga and whatever. So, <laughs> so fun. Yeah. So it's cool. I love it. I, I hardly ever talk about my books to like people that I interact with on a daily basis, like in my neighborhood or like, or whatever. So it's always fun to talk to people who are reading them and to hear that after all these years, before we're strangers is still like, it's still alive. And I'm, I'm like so proud of that. I'm so happy that people That's- like it. Yeah, it's alive and well, and I cannot wait to see it get adapted. And yeah, wish you were here, got adapted. Like all of that will just be a real Thank dream. You. Thank you so much. My I'm pleasure. I'm I'm really excited too. I hope it all happens. I would love that. I would love to see it all come to life. And I know that I ha- my husband periodically reminds me that it might not be exactly how you imagined it. And I'm like, I know, but that's okay. I that's still a whole see other it. can of worms. Yeah. yeah totally. But it's still your story and it'll still always be your story. And like the books will always be, you know, yeah, for sure here for us <laughs> forever. You. Well, I think that's it. Thank you so much for taking the time. This was so much fun. Yeah, definitely. I enjoyed talking to you. This was, this was a lot of fun. And I wanted to just say congratulations on your podcast now, and I'm going to tell a lot of people about it. And I love that you're sharing so many books that I love too. Um, and I see on your Instagram and that's really cool. So people are getting kind of like getting, getting some book love. So that's For good. sure. That's the goal. That's the goal. Just need like everyone to read the same books that I'm reading. Cause I feel like <laughs> I have really good taste, you know, I'm pretty cool. So I think so too. I think <laughs> <a great> taste. <laughs> Thank you so much.